Isabel. Welcome to the office. Thank you so much for coming in today. I'm happy to see you. So I'm just going to start off by cleaning my hands with a little bit of sanitizer and then I'll go ahead and get started with your examination. So it looks like I have you in for just a regular checkup. It looks like we're looking at your scalp and then your back. You've been having a little bit of itchiness on your back. Okay, so I'll go ahead and have a look at that for you and get you all squared away. Are you feeling okay right now? Okay, still experiencing just some of the discomfort and itchiness. Yes. Okay. Let's start off by having a look. Just have you relax in whatever position is most comfortable for you. And is it okay if I just go ahead and remove your headband? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So I'm just going to place that next to you. And then I want to start by just having a look kind of at your hair overall. Because I know you said you were experiencing some of that itchiness in your scalp as well. So I do have... A little regular pen right here that I'll use. So I'm just going to start by having a look at your hair as a whole, just looking at kind of the overall texture. So I was reading that you were experiencing a little bit of dryness of your scalp, as well as some possible flaking that may or may not be related. So Having a look overall, see if there's anything that's more obvious that could be going on. So your hair as a whole does look pretty healthy. I'm not seeing any cause for concern right off the bat. The hair shaft itself appears to be intact all the way to the end. You do not appear to have an excess of split ends as far as I can tell. I'm going to shine my light through here so I can see a little better. Okay. So it does look like you color process your hair, but I'm not seeing any areas that appear more damaged than others. I do have a little bit of a brighter light that I think I'll go ahead and use and that might give me just better visualization here. And while I do that, I'm going to go in with my comb and this has been sterilized. It's just going to allow me to separate certain sections of your hair while I have a look. I'm just going to go in with my other little light here and excuse me while I just section off a small piece of your hair. Start with this very front portion. Most people tend to experience kind of itchiness and dryness near the front of their hair. So just using my comb to comb through and firstly I want to see if we get any shed hair that may indicate damage to the follicle. So far, not seeing anything. So I'm going to go in with my flashlight. And my scalp actually looks okay. So what I'm going to do with this section of hair is just do a slight tugging. And you can let me know if this is uncomfortable. I'm just testing for the strength and integrity of your hair follicle. As well as the hair shaft. Not seeing any signs of gumming or stretching of the hair, which is good. Does not appear protein deficient. Okay. So, I'm just going to have a look at this little section here. sweep your hair to the side here so I can have a look behind your ear. Sometimes we can have underlying signs of infection hiding behind the ear, which is 
don't see any signs of. It does appear that you have a tattoo and it appears to have healed well. Good, so no sign cause for concern there. I do see a mole on your ear, which is obviously unrelated to your visit, but I will just go ahead and have a look. And that appears okay. okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come around on the other side and just have a look and make sure everything's pretty equal bilaterally. strand from the center kind of near the crown and perform the same examination just looking for any excess shed hair I will take one piece so I will go ahead and examine that with my light and the shaft is intact throughout so that's good news your hair is very thick. Doesn't appear to be any signs of abnormal baldness or hair loss. If I could just have you turn your head towards me, perfect. I'm just gonna sweep to the side. Okay. Once again, just having a look at this area in front of your ear. Okay. And having a closer look at the scalp, there doesn't appear to be any abnormality here. Not seeing any signs of excess leaking. No redness of the scalp. And there does not appear to be any damage to the follicle. No signs of folliculitis. I'm going to have a look behind the ear again. And it does appear that you have a tattoo on the side as well. Which is seemingly healed normally. No signs of abnormal scarring. Or rejection of the ink, which is great. Just coming up to the top. Here, I'm gonna have a look at the top of your scalp and just go ahead and have a look if you have a natural part in your hair. Station. I'm not seeing any eggs or active lice. Definitely no signs of mites or any other abnormalities. This is going to section off a very small section here and do another test for strength and integrity. So I'm just going to slightly tug here. brush the ends of your hair here and I just have one more look with my light. Okay. Alright, so all of that appears to be within normal limits as far as I can tell. Go ahead and go back to my pen light. Perimeter of your hairline as 
well as having a look at your skin and just see if there's anything here that could be the cause of the itchiness of your scalp, but I don't see anything. There's nothing in or around the ear that would suggest any sign of infection or any other cause for concern. Thank you. Just having a look at your neck. I don't see anything here. No signs of discoloration. What I would like to do while I have you lying there is just a very brief test for any signs of neurological abnormality. So you don't have to do anything with this test. This is more so going to be me performing some observations, looking at the state of your scalp, as well as kind of producing some very specific stimuli and I'm essentially looking for a reaction. So, as I stated, you don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna be placing a couple different items and textures along your scalp and possibly around the back of your neck. And for now, you can just lie comfortably. Okay. So I'm going to begin with this very gentle acupressure tool. So I just want you to find a position that's comfortable for you. sweep your hair to the side here. Perfect. Thank you. So what I would like to do is just produce some very specific sensations on your head. And you don't have to do anything. I'm just looking for regular neurological function here. So first you're going to feel a very gentle kind of pressurized sensation on your scalp. As I stated, you don't have to say anything. I'm just looking for a very specific reaction here, which I am seeing. Normal reactivity. Good. Let's go ahead and test another area. We'll be testing kind of the nape of your neck here. Good. Just gonna use this little clip to clip your hair kind of out of the way. Okay, is that comfortable? Okay. So I'm just gonna shine my light here and kind of go along the back of your hairline. Very normal reactivity here. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's go ahead and go in with our second tool. And this one might tickle just slightly. I'm gonna it's a very slight puff of air. Again, just looking for that normal neurological reaction, which doesn't appear to be intact.
one that appears to be within normal limits. So having stayed just like that, I'm gonna go in with the third tool. And this time I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a kind of scratchy sponge texture. And this is just gonna allow me to produce a very slight kind of grazing sensation. And I want you to just relax and allow yourself to react as you would. abnormal reactivity here. All of this appears to be very normal for this type of stimuli. that I would like to go in with is similar but slightly different. So this time I'll be using this sensory brush and it does have very small kind of delicate wispy feathers. So same thing, just testing for normal neurological reaction. It does appear to be intact. I'm not noting any abnormalities here. Good. Okay. Alright, so we can go ahead and go in with our last tool. And this one is the most specific and most likely to cause a reaction. I am going to be as gentle as I can. I will just warn you that this is very cold and slightly sharp. It won't hurt, but it is a very specific sensation, okay? to be any signs of abnormal neurological function. I'm not noticing anything that I would suggest as a cause for concern. Slight overreaction here. Okay. I'm also going to test that a little further back. Good. Okay. Very good. All of your sensory components appear to be intact as far as I can tell. And just because I did see a slight overreaction in that one area, I'm going to perform a couple percussions here. So you're just going to feel a very slight kind of tapping in those same areas, okay? All of that as well within normal limits. So I am going to go ahead and perform essentially the same examination on the other side. So I will have you go ahead and turn your head the other way for me. We are going to perform the same exact examinations on this side. So we'll go ahead and start with our acupressure tool. Okay. So here's one tool. 
everyone does appear to be the same number of reactions where we're not seeing any overreaction specifically in this area. And a little bit of a reaction there, so we'll make sure to retest that. sensation. Specifically looking for a reaction in all of these kind of microscopic hair follicles here, which I am seeing. Again, slide of a reaction specifically in this area. switch over to the brush now and again performing the same sets of tests so just slight brushing here So still getting that of a reaction on this side. Let's go ahead and test that with our sponge. Definitely an appropriate reaction there. sensory components, I would say that there is some mild abnormalities. I did notice a couple overreactions in specific areas, mostly here in front of your ear and then as well as behind your ear. And I'm not exactly sure if that's related to the symptoms you're having today, but it is something that I would like to go ahead and document so that we can assess in your future visits. So in the meantime, go ahead and perform the same palpations I did on the other side. Just percussing these same areas. Good. Okay. So we got an overreaction there as well, which is great. And I think what I would like to do at this time is go ahead and have a look at your back. So the only abnormalities that I noticed within your scalp itself is just maybe a little bit of dryness around the crown area as well as in the hairline. Other than that, everything appeared mostly normal. Probably just some very common dandruff that's going on and I can prescribe you um, something similar to a ketoconazole shampoo, maybe not quite as strong because I don't think you need anything that's overtly medicated, maybe something to just bring down a little bit of that inflammation. So I am gonna go ahead and assist you in adjusting your shirt. So just stay relaxed for me, whatever position is comfortable for you. Okay, so is it okay if I go ahead and lift your shirt off? Okay, perfect. And just gonna kind of roll it up here so that we have 
better access to these areas. I think. Is that comfortable for you? Okay, good. So what I would like to do initially, of course, is just begin with a visual inspection. So I'm gonna have a look with my pen light and just kind of making sure that everything looks okay appear to have a couple of moles that I might want to have a closer look at. Overall, there doesn't appear to be anything overtly concerning. Do you see a couple signs of slightly abnormal discoloration here? having a look at your tattoos, looking for any signs of abnormality there. Okay. All of that appears to be okay. Let me go ahead and take a couple measurements here. symmetry. These moles looking for anything that could be cause for concern, any signs of melanoma. Any reason for us to get a biopsy, but this one here does appear pretty symmetrical. It is not raised in texture and the color is even throughout. No signs of blackening or dark spots, which is good. I also see a very small mole here that I will go ahead and perform the same sets of measurements looking for symmetry among the sides, which I am seeing. Slightly raised in texture, but I don't think it's concerning. Then I have this one here that is definitely raised. I am seeing symmetry along the edges. It is spherical in shape and doesn't appear concerning to me at this time. The color is what I would consider normal. Very good. Alright, so I do just have a different kind of ruler here. This is going to allow me to measure the symmetry in the arch of your back. So, just go ahead and stay relaxed for me. I'm just going to use this to measure for any signs of scoliosis. So, essentially, this ruler allows me to measure the curvature of your spine comparatively from one side to the other. So, looking for any signs of drooping or curving. If there is a curve, we want to make sure that it is equal and then it's not curving more so one side compared to the other. So we're looking for symmetry bilaterally, which just means from one side to the other. Okay. So essentially how we test that is I just make sure that there's even space on either side of the arc of my ruler, which does appear to be. I'm not seeing anything that looks asymmetrical. I'm also going to test for that vertically. So just placing my ruler here and looking for any signs of normal curvature, which I don't believe I'm seeing today. So I'm also going to test that around your rib cage. So I'm going to place my ruler here. And I'm going to make sure to measure both sides comparatively and they do appear to be equal. 
like to do at this time is perform some percussions of your spine. So I have a couple different tools that I will be doing that with. So we can start with our most delicate hammer here. So I just have a little bit of a reflex hammer. I'm going to be performing some percussions of your spine to start off with. So essentially you're going to feel me tapping down along your spine. You let me know if this is uncomfortable at all. Do it along your rib cage. Good. Perfect. So I'm going to repeat that test with a little bit of a bigger hammer. This time I'm going to get a little bit closer to you, so please bear with me. smaller end of my hammer here to very gently percuss directly on the spine. I'm going to perform a swinging hammer test, and this is going to allow me to percuss along your organs. So just bear with me as I percuss along your kidneys. issues with that. So I'm just placing my tools back down. Next thing I would like to do is some manual palpations of your spine. So you're just going to feel me wiggle my fingers around a little bit along different parts of your back. You let me know if any of this is uncomfortable. Kind of the individual vertebrae here, making sure that there are no abnormalities in texture or pressure, looking for any signs of pain or discomfort that could indicate possible slip disc or any other injuries to the spine. So we're also going to palpate along the sides. Good. 
the same thing on the other side. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and auscultate. So I have just a stethoscope here that I'll be using to listen to your lungs. So listening for normal breathing sounds, any possible abnormalities here. So I do apologize, my stethoscope is just a little bit cold. So as I place this on your back, I just want you to breathe normally for me. Sounds seemingly normal. No signs of diminishing of your lungs or anything like that. Okay. Okay, so what I would like to do at this time is test once again for any neurological deficits. So there are several nerve endings in your that kind of protrude to the surface of the skin. So essentially we're looking for a very specific reaction, maybe a slight jerking or um, even goosebumps or just any sign that you are feeling normal sensation along your spine, which indicates very normal neurological function. If there were a lack of reaction, then we would be concerned that there might be something wrong. So I am going to just touch you with various objects just as I did along your hairline and I want you to just react normally, okay? You can let me know if any of that is uncomfortable. And I'm gonna start with this very cold tool. So I'm just gonna be placing it on different areas of your back and I would like you to just indicate whether or not it feels different in any area comparatively. So for example, if I were to touch you with it here versus here, they should feel about the same temperature. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So, should feel that this is very cold as well as here and here as well as here here as well as here good so this side is obviously ready to go it should feel the same as this side and it should feel the same as I go all the way down so there shouldn't be a change in sensation at the top versus the bottom feel the same to you here versus here slightly different here okay. so it does appear that you're having a little bit of a not loss in sensation but maybe diminished sensation on this side versus this side so you're obviously more sensitive on that side versus here which is interesting so let's go ahead and proceed with our next tool so I'm going to once again use the puff of air, and this might be slightly hard to feel on your back, but you should be able to feel something, so I just want to test. Here and here. Good. 
and curious to see if you have a secondary abnormal reaction with this. I'm going to first test kind of down the spine. Now this should feel the same going all the way down. Okay, and of an overreaction there. And we're getting a pretty equal reaction on both sides with this stool, which is good. Okay, and if I go laterally, should be no difference from one side to the other. to proceed with our sharp wheel and then just looking to see if there are any abnormalities from one side to the other so I'm going to start here Just back here. This is here. Good. I'm going to do that directly down the spine. So I get a slight overreaction here. with our next tool, which is the sponge. So this covers a wider surface area, generally produces a bigger reaction. So we'll use this as kind of a test and see. here but this appears to be normal. Okay. okay. So now I just want you to tell me if you can feel the difference between these two sensations. So just react accordingly whether you feel sharp or dull. So this will be dull and this will be sharp. 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 
good. And very good. Okay. So all of that was perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to just put a couple checks for temperature abnormality here. So I just want to make sure that you are feeling everything equal throughout and that none of the kind of slight irregularities that we saw in your neurological test was related to any signs of infection or any damage to your back. So I'm going to do that by testing for temperature abnormalities and just want to make sure that you are having a relatively consistent Make sure that you do have a relatively consistent temperature throughout your back. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it should be within just a couple digits of each other. We don't want to see a big increase hot spots that could indicate any signs of infection or nerve damage. Okay, so all of that is relatively equal. And just to follow up on that, I'm going to do a couple checks for temperature abnormality with the back of my hands. So just stay like you are. I'm just going to place the back of my hands along your back. Make sure that there's not any spot that's warmer than another. So I'm going to slightly pour at the top. That is normal. We tend to carry more heat in our lower back. So I would suspect that you are going to be slightly warmer here versus here. But the change is relatively gradual. There's not a very significant sharp kind of increase in temperature or anything like that so that's good and I'm just gonna do some very kind of soft palpations with the palm of my hand feeling for anything that might feel out of place or indicate a cause for concern I'm just kind of pushing things around making sure that everything feels the way it should Ensuring that none of this is causing you any pain. So as far as the itchiness, I do see some spots over your back that are slightly drier than others. So it looks like you do have some abnormalities in the skin texture kind of right along the spine, mostly mid back and kind of down towards your pelvic region. So I am seeing slightly drier skin in this area, which is probably what is causing the itchiness. So I would suggest using either a thicker lotion or I could even prescribe you a medicated lanolin cream which is just going to kind of penetrate deeper into the secondary layer of the skin. So I also realize that this area of the back is kind of hard to reach when you're applying lotion on yourself. So we have someone help you or there are even tools that you can buy to help you apply lotion to your back kind of comes on a stick and you can just use it behind your back to rub the lotion in so that you're not missing any areas but it doesn't appear to be a rash or anything that would indicate need for testing or anything like that it does appear to just be a little bit of excess dry skin probably related to the decreased temperatures outside and you are cooler in this part of your back so can be part of it as well as your body is trying to regulate temperature from one zone to the other sometimes that can cause a little bit of issues within your skin but for the most part everything does appear to be pretty normal so 
no cause for concern there. And their scalp exam, as I stated, was seemingly normal. There were some slight kind of dry areas within your scalp, but nothing that was overtly concerning. So I would say you are probably good to go for today. Um, if you would like, I can go ahead and prescribe you a couple over-the-counter things. Um, I even have some very slightly medicated options that can help you heal a little bit quicker, but I don't think it's necessary unless it's something that you're really wanting to rectify kind of immediately, okay? Okay. So I will go ahead and put all of those recommendations in your patient portal and you can let me know which selection you would like and then I can go from there. I can send over any prescription that you'd prefer electronically. That way you can just pick it up at your pharmacy. So if there's nothing else today, Isabel, I would say you are good to go and I will go ahead and see you at your next appointment. Obviously, if any of these symptoms should get worse or you're still feeling cause for concern, you can reach out to me and I will go ahead and get you in, okay? All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much. You get home safely and have a good evening. Mm -hmm.